Welcome back, everybody. This is uh, lesson 18, I believe, of uh, developing a dynamic series from start to finish. It has been a little while. And uh, the reason that it's taken a little while, among a couple other things, is uh, when I went to record this series, or this, this part of the series, uh, I went to implement Tiny MCE. Now, I'm very familiar with Tiny MCE. I've been using it for years. But when I started to work on it and record the video, I realized that Tiny MCE was built a while ago and it revolves heavily around JavaScript. And since then, even though Tiny MCE has uh, incorporated a jQuery, a pseudo jQuery version of it, it still requires a lot of work to, or a lot of understanding of potentially JavaScript and and other things to make it function right. Now, since then, I've come across uh, other other options, such as uh, one that uh, our, our friend Simon Morris brought to my attention called Redactor. Now, Redactor is a pretty simple jQuery uh, WYSIWYG editor. The downside to Redactor is that it is not free. However, they do offer a 30-day trial. And when that trial runs up, to me, from what I can tell, it's up to you to buy a license or use it illegitimately. And that is your decision. However, I strongly suggest that if you're going to make any money off of what you're building to somehow wiggle that into the cost of whatever client you're working on or whatever because that is the right thing to do. However, Redactor seems like a much easier solution for us to put into our CMS. And I'll give you an example why. If we were to look at our files here, we open up the JavaScript folder. Um, I have these separated into two different uh, groups for each, TinyMCE and Redactor. Now, you know, let me sort these. There we go. Now, Redactor, this folder holds the actual source code, the, the guts of Redactor. Redactor files, this, this holds documentation and examples. Same goes for TinyMCE. TinyMCE holds the guts of TinyMCE. And then tinymce underscore files holds the examples and documentation. Now, if we just take a quick look at these, we'll notice that when we open tinymce, we've got a bunch of other folders here. Now, this isn't too big of a deal. And I will note that this is the, quote, jQuery version of tinymce. But I wanna, what I want to stress is, is that <clears throat> and again, like on the radio show, if you listened, uh, correct me, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but what it seems like is, while TinyMCE is a great product, it was built well before jQuery made its mark. So TinyMCE kind of had to build from the ground up with JavaScript. But then jQuery came along and got pretty popular and became a pretty big standard in the industry. So they needed to come up with a solution, so they created their, their jQuery version. However, it looks more like they wrote jQuery implementation around what they've already built with all the JavaScript. And you'll see a lot here. Um, now, in this, and just to preface this, it also shows how robust TinyMCE is, though. So that is a, that is a pro of TinyMCE, but at the same time, um, in our in this particular example and lesson uh, I'm starting to think TinyMCE may be too robust to explain uh, and get it'll get away from what we're wanting to do so you can look through here and see there's a ton of plugins here just I mean tons of them and these are all included in TinyMCE each one of these needing to be manipulated independently if you want to mess with them, if you want to change them, tweak them. And understand them for that matter. Then you have themes. Now this is great too though. I mean, themes are great. It allows you to reorganize buttons um, in the interface itself, change the style of the interface, etc. 
um, and then some utilities here. So that is the kind of core of TinyMCE. Now if we open up Redactor, that's it. In fact, it looks bigger than what it is. These two are the same thing. The only thing separating them is that this version of Redactor's uh, jQuery source has been minified. And for those who don't understand what that means, it's kind of like compressing it. So if we open up this version of Redactor, you'll see that everything is laid out. I mean, I say in plain English, but if you're not familiar with JavaScript or jQuery, this may not be plain English, but at least it's legible. You can read things like outdent, outdent, indent, indent, cancel, cancel, things like that. And from what I can tell, just off of looking at this, this is more of a language thing. This is how the header is displayed, header one, header two, whereas this is more of the variable, for lack of better words, that controls the visible end of things. So to make something bold, this is how it's actually viewed when you click on bold or hover over and it says this is the bold button. Um, but so, so it's kind of legible. Now if you open up the minified version, this is not legible, not at all. It's compressed. It's smushed as much as you can smush. In fact, yeah, it's very smushed. And all this does is, you know, if we look at the two side by side, getting through this whole thing requires a lot of navigation. We've got 4,210 lines of code, while in the minified version, we really just have one line of code. Well, 12 to be exact, but the actual source, the actual guts and glory of it is all done on one line. And uh, just and because I have word wrap turned on, it's showing it as multiple lines. If I was to take word, word wrap off, then uh, we'd just see one line that goes on and on and on and on. So these are, in fact, the same thing. One might ask the reason why we have two. <clears throat> the two, it's not, it's not uh, an unwise practice to use this version here when developing. It allows you to go in and clearly make changes to the interface and how things function, depending on how comfortable you are in jQuery, JavaScript. Whereas in the minified version, this is for production. This is for when you're done. You see the file size is almost half. It just increases load time, or decreases load time, and overall just helps your, your page load quicker. Now, you can manipulate this and then minify it later, and we can talk about that another time. So, essentially, there are two pieces. The other piece is then the CSS which you can go in here and clearly change the styling of things, positioning of things, etc. All the things you can do in CSS are available here. And there's even some, some uh, yeah, CSS3 stuff going on here with gradients and shadows and things like that. So it's, it's a lot more current. Um, as far as functionality goes, I think TinyMCE probably has a lot more going for it as far as custom uh, customization, um, you know, just manipulating it in general, but Redactor seems to be very, very plug and play. Put it in, get the job done, good to go. So then it really just comes down to cost, and they do have licenses available. Um, I'm going to try and get a hold of these guys and see what I can do about um, a license, at least for me, to continue using it. As far as for demonstration purposes, I mean, it, it would only benefit them to have me showing it to the 7,000 some subscribers we have, plus the, you know, almost 1.5 million views we have at this point. So we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, I, I ask you guys to take a look at both of them, tinymce.com, uh, I believe, and Redactor, let me see. Well, here's the URL, imperavi.com. You can get to Redactor. Uh, imperavi.com slash Redactor. 
and this even here gives you a better idea of what you got. You can insert images, do all the positioning you want, switch to HTML view, a lot of the stuff that jQuery ha or uh, TinyMC has. And if we scroll down, we can see uh, maybe um, here's the cost. <clears throat> now, what we're going to try to do is work out a deal with them, whether they're responsive or not. I don't know. For now, we're going to we're going to work on this 30-day trial, and then what we will do is most likely buy the developer license. And what this allows us to do is integrate it with any commercial CMS software. So, in, in our thinking, and maybe we're wrong, once we finish this series, thank God, um, for you guys that is, uh, we're going to move into the Atom project. And we want to be able to, we're going to integrate whatever solution we choose. And if we choose this one, this developer license should suffice so that now not only can we use it and you know not worry about uh, overstaying our, our welcome with our trial and or having somebody hounding us for money but we can in fact put it in our CMS and then you guys can use it freely within that CMS so once the CMS is built that $99 license from what I'm reading here should be able to be or should suffice uh, across the board. So anybody who uses the Atom CMS should be able to, in fact, use Redactor without any problems. So now I'll note, <clears throat> now since this is the most recent uh, uh, part to our series, uh, we haven't actually done anything, but I wanted to discuss this uh, because I think it's important for people to understand a little bit. Um, let me actually really quick show you a difference, uh, or at least I'll explain a difference. One thing is that you really, for the most part, have to just attach the redactor I I uh, script to a uh, element on the page. There's a little bit of jQuery involved, but it's very minimal. Way easier for me to explain on a novice level. With Tiny MCE, if I can locate it really quickly, here is a lot. Here is a good example of what's involved in incorporating Tiny MCE into your page. Um, and some of this can be self-explanatory. I could explain it, but it does get a little difficult. Now let's pull up Redactor and pull up one of their examples. There you go. Much easier. In fact, I mean, you could you could even really condense this down if you wanted to make your page look nicer. Um, just a lot less for me to explain. There's some real simple things going on here. This text area has the ID of redactor content. This function is referring to redactor content and saying apply the redactor WYSIWYG to it. Simple as that. Let's take a look at the other one really quick. See how this could get a little confusing? It's doing a similar thing here. This right here is saying text area dot tiny MCE and basically saying any text area go ahead and apply that to it. So Look at it. Um, the next the next session we'll do, we'll actually talk about how to implement it, and I'm pretty sure we're going to go with Redactor. And uh, for those of you who've been waiting a long time for this video, um, I know we didn't do much, but we did talk about some things, and we explained why I got kind of stuck in a quandary between that and my my health issues. Uh, things got a little backed up, so I apologize for that. And again, if we haven't mentioned it enough, we're not going to do any series anymore that stops we will release a whole series at once from now on since you guys are keeping up faster than we can we can make videos it's time now that we don't we don't try to make them as as we go so the next video we will be incorporating the much anticipated WYSIWYG to our Atom CMS thank you